Good morning, guys. I'm coming to you live from our new classroom. Over the weekend, I made a classroom in my house and I put some stuff up to make it seem like our old classroom. Still got my pillows, got some of our letters and numbers, colors. So just wanted you to see that before I started reading the book that we're going to be reading today called Wangari's Trees of Peace. So get ready for that. At the end, we're gonna talk about central idea and key details. Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa by Jeanette Winter. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mother go to gather firewood for cooking. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugarcane, and maize from the rich soil. Wingari shines in school, and when she grows tall like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America. Six years later, her studies over, Wingari returns to her Kenya home and sees a change. What has happened, she wonders. Where are the trees? Wingari sees women bent from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees barren land where no crops grow. And where are the birds? Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. Will all of Kenya become a desert? She wonders as her tears fall. Wingari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard, one tree at a time. She starts by planting nine seedlings. Watching the seedlings take root gives Wingari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery. In an open space, she plants row after row of the tiny trees. Next, Wangari convinces the village women that planting trees is a good thing. She gives each one a seedling. Our lives will be better when we have trees again. You'll see, we are planting the seeds of hope. The women spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows, like a green belt stretching over the land. The government men laugh. Women can't do this, they say. It takes trained foresters to plant trees. The women ignore the laughter and keep planting. Wingari pays them a small amount for each seedling still living after three months, th their first earnings ever. Word travels like wind rustling through leaves about the green returning to Wangari's village. Soon other women in other villages and towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. But the cutting continues. Wingari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees still remaining. We need a park more than we need an office tower. The government men disagree. Wingari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker and put her in jail. And still she stands tall. Right is right, even if you're alone. But Wingari is not alone. Talk of the trees spreads over all of Africa like ripples in Lake Victoria. More women hear the talk and plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. The seedlings take root and grow tall until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. The umbrella of green in Kenya returns. Women walk tall, their backs straight, for now they can gather firewood closer to home. The land is no longer barren. Sweet potatoes, sugarcane, and maize grow again in the rich red earth. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees and of her army of women who planted them. And if you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below you and the green Wangari brought back to Africa. All right, guys, now that we read that book, we're going to talk about the central idea. The central idea is also known as the main idea. So if you know what the main idea is, then you already know what the central idea is. The central idea is what the text is mostly about. So think in your head for a second. What was that book, Wangari's Trees of Peace, what was it mostly about? My friends, 
my central idea or what I thought the central idea was, was this. Wangari made a difference by planting seedlings and giving people jobs. So the central idea or the main idea was how Wangari made a difference, right? Great. So next we're going to talk about key details. And here on our poster, it says that key details are like the scoops of ice cream. They're the smaller ideas that support our central idea. So they're like evidence from the story that shows us more about our central idea. So here's what I've written. I made like a web diagram, okay? And the first one, my first key detail, because this is my central idea, my key details, I link to my central idea. They're all around it, okay? The first one says, she pays women who take care of plants. That goes to my central idea, right? Because it says, Wangari made a difference by planting seedlings and giving people jobs. She paid people, gave them jobs for taking care of plants. The next one I wrote was her news spread to other countries. So that shows that she made a difference because that news spread all the way to other countries. Other people in other countries heard about the difference Wangari was making. The next one says she protects the trees. So that also shows that she made a difference. She's protecting something she believes in, even if she's all alone, right? I want you now to think about at least two, if you can think of more, do it. At least two things to add to our central idea, two more key details, okay? So write this one out on a piece of paper, or some of you have whiteboards at home I've seen. If you wanna use a whiteboard, go ahead. Write it out on a piece of paper or a whiteboard or whatever you wanna write it on, and go ahead and add more key details. Two at least, but if you can add more, go for it, okay?